And if you want the sign man rises back with more deadly premonition to a blessing in the skies. Alright, let's go, 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 let's go, go, go. Get out of there. Save it, save it, save it, save it. Wait, out we go, out we go. You're not going to let me finish investigating here? Sometimes taking the most roundabout path is actually the most efficient way to reach one's destination. Isn't that right, Zach? Holy moly, do I miss something? Oh, no. down here. Oh, did he say that there was another room or something? Or oh, something to pick up. Tall giant? All right. Now that one's gotta be a joke. Right, Mr. York? Oh, there we go. Here we go. Elevator needs a key, Mr. York. Do you have one? Actually, no. I didn't think you'd ever want to go down there. So I didn't bother to go and get one. Well, then, would you go and get one now? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. COG, I know. I'll tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons, the folks who own this place. Well, they don't too much like the police, and they sure as hell don't like them when they're my color. It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through, so they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. And what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah. You FBI folks are good at that, right? That's always what I see you doing on TV. <laughs> Holy moly. Not everything is like what you see on TV. The elevator won't move without a key, Mr. York. Think you two can go and figure something out? I'll search around here in the meantime. I believe in you. I know they didn't make you a special agent for nothing. <laughs> well, let's use that vision, shall we? Oh, there we go, there we go, go, go. Zach, I think we can move this. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side. Go in. Let's go, go, go. Oh, something shining over here. Let's get it. Hold on a second, man. 
Have to just move this. What the hell? Wait, how do we... How do we get this out of the way then? Just like that, just like that. No. Oh, there we go. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Let's go in. Zach, the human ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Some humans have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it. Indeed, indeed. Let's pick that up. Oh, the key is ours. Now we should be able to operate the elevator. No Indeed. need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. I'll write him a letter of apology later. He shouldn't be sleeping on the job. Oh, let's get back out, let's get back out. Right, now we can get the elevator. Mr. York, did you find a key? Ha, now that's my special agent. There ain't no stopping you. Wanna head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. What are we gonna find down here? Zack, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit. Or minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. This is the ambiguous zero. Hey, Avery! Open the damn door, Avery! It ain't no use, Mr. York. Once Avery starts working on something, that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. We'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, didn't you? Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal. But it's still dangerous to use them on humans. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. You're gonna shoot some meat to get his attention. I'm right, ain't I? Indeed, indeed.
Right. Let's look around first. Let's look around first. Let's talk to Melvin again, shall we? I lent you Mr. Alligator for self-defense. But if you end up hurting a civilian, you can bet you'll be hearing from me. I lent you, but if you... Oh, wait, let's save it, let's save it, save it, save it. Always save when you get the opportunity. Oh, wait, let's shoot some stuff. We got his attention. This is Mr. York, an agent from the FBI. Oh, my God, he's ten foot tall. Hi, Avery. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. York? Uh, you a smarty pants, hmm? <laughs> He's shy than he looks. Uh, come on, just settle down, Avery. Tell him what this here place is for. Lots of expensive food here. You're mighty precious to the Clarksons, so I gotta guard it. I see. So you're this area's keeper? Oh, I help with the research too. I do like research. Mm. Research? What are you talking about, Avery? This doesn't look like a lab to me. Oh, ain't no lab. It's a warehouse. Ain't no lab. Smarty pant scientist does the research. <laughs> I ain't no smarty pants, no. He's a bit slow in the mind, but he ain't a bad guy. Your story about the giant who carried Lisa. Don't tell me you think it's him. I mean, it's true that he's free to come and go as he pleases in this warehouse, but... No, as far as I can tell, he's just a bit over 6'5". The one who moved Lisa's body must be at least 10 feet tall. He's clearly too short. <laughs> too short, huh? Well, if you ever happen to find a man who makes him look small, I'd sure like to meet him. Huh. Uh, Lisa. What? Holy hey, moly. Hey, cut it out! Uh, Lisa. Why? Avery, that's not Lise. Not Lise? This is Melvin's daughter, and my precious assistant. Unfortunately, Elise is no longer with us. Elise! Elise! The hell, holy moly, man. My fault! He, uh... I guess he's sort of like Lise, you know? Let's see, the poor fella's got himself a child like mine. You know how normal kids tease other kids in order to get attention? Well, with this big lug, sometimes folks who don't know him too well see something and end up calling the police. But I know that deep down, he's got a good heart. Hey, Mr. York, I'll keep him busy, but I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry this particular inspection along. Just holler at me if you find anything. I reckon that'll make it easier for you to go do your thing, yeah? Melvin, I think you're finally starting to catch on. Indeed, indeed. Uh, 
I'll keep an eye on him while we're here. Just relax, Avery. We'll get out of your way as soon as we're finished. I'll keep... Just... What? Hung alligators. I suppose in a way they sort of look like flying serpents. Oh, but that's pushing it. Remember, we're in a dark basement here. They'll never reach the sky. Indeed, indeed. And Dewey. Now here's some real Cajun cuisine. The way these sausages are linked up, they almost look like a serpent. But it's hard to imagine them flying. Let's move on, Zack. Indeed we should. Indeed we should. There are torn off claws and legs scattered all over the ground. I doubt they'll fly anytime soon. I can't tell which ones are from crawfish and which parts are from shrimp. How about you, Zack? Frozen oysters. Personally, I'd rather have a cocktail filled with fresh ones. We hunt for more materials than we can eat and freeze them over long periods of time. The human race gives terror a whole new meaning. Cans of Holy Trinity paste. Onions, bell peppers, and celery. The absolute basics for any Cajun dish. This product combines them all into some sort of paste. Oof, people actually buy this garbage? Even the name sounds idiotic. Zach, I just made an eternal promise with myself. If I ever happen to come across any food prepared with this paste, I vow to never call it Cajun food. Wait. Okay, what else is there? What else is there, man? Okay, I'm use oh, there's something there. That's just, just a save point. Oh, what's this? Avery, this box looks special. Clocks and food. Mm. For their home. Melvin, is this the Clarkson's family crest? <laughs> oh, the dragonfly? Yeah, that's the Clarkson's mark, all right. Ain't no big deal, though. You can find those all over town. Is that so? Well, yeah. They pretty much run all of this town's major industries. Yeah. I do believe they own just about everything there is to own. So their word is law. They got the whole darn town tattooed with their dragonflies. They can't even walk a few steps without seeing one. Zack, this dragonfly is our flying serpent. The flying serpent owns this town. They're related to Lise Clarkson, our victim. And Pungan's oracle pointed us toward their family crest. The Clarksons must be deeply intertwined with this case. Indeed, indeed. Melvin, Patricia, I think I've had enough of this frozen world. Let's head back out to that merciless sun. Well, what are you waiting for? I can't bear to spend another second down here. What?
So, what do we do now, Mr. York? Zack and I will take things from here. Uh, then what should I do? Tend to your sick wife? I don't know. You're free to do as you please. I'll stop by the sheriff's office when I need your help again. I suppose that's what I'll do then. It'll sure make Candy happy. <laughs> but I am the sheriff of this town, so I do intend to get some work done. I know. How about I search for Lisa's body while you're busy? Not a bad idea. Just be careful that you don't get attacked by a barefooted giant. Hey, don't scare me like that. Why do you keep talking about that giant anyway? You really think some giant was responsible for all this? Melvin, don't be silly. Of course I do. Just when I thought you were starting to catch on. Disappointing, to say the least. But how can you be so sure? I want to see some proof. Proof number one. The footprints that led up to where Lisa's body originally was were made with bare feet. None of the prints looked similar to those of common insulated boots, and the arches of the feet were visible. The person who carried out Lisa's body must have had very large feet. I'd say they were at least 16 inches. Proof number two. I found fingerprints on the cord of one of the hanging lights in the warehouse. The fingerprints weren't aimed up from below. They were coming directly from the side. Clearly, the giant moved the light because it was in his way. He pinched the cord with his fingers. Proof number three. There was nothing else found in the vicinity where Lisa's body was stored. This means the giant carried her out without dragging her across the floor. But there's only one set of footprints. The only conclusion I can draw from this evidence is that a barefooted giant standing over 10 feet tall carried Lisa's body out. That concludes the entirety of my proof. Any objections, Melvin? But there ain't no way a human could ever be that tall. Have you seen every human alive with your own eyes? Well then, you need to forget all your preconceived notions when embarking on an investigation. Whether you come face to face with a 10-foot giant or a skeletal gentleman, you always need to accept everything that comes to you with a clear mind. Do that, and eventually the truth will reveal itself to you. You're a smart kid, I'm sure you understand. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Mr. FBI Special Agent, sir. A sharp eye and flawless observational skills. Uncovering the truth with a heady intuition. I won't ever question you again. Heck, I'll do whatever you say. That's it, Melvin. I'm glad you finally caught on. Okay, time to go, Patty. You know this town well, so I'd like you to accompany me from now on. Patty? Indeed, indeed. Zack, we found the Flying Serpent. Now we simply need to locate the Ten Maidens. It's time to head on to Alexis's diner and lane. Indeed, indeed. Let's go, go, go. Get the skateboard out.
given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state, and then we never would have found it. In the end, we would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault, along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag, buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. Instead, it traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. But things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the United States trying to track down Sun Rouge. We can't let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? We need to find some sort of clue before this southern sun melts it all away. right to Louisiana. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand, and Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. We just happened to hear news about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in DC. They would have given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state, and then we never would have found it. In the end, it would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. Instead, it traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. Things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the United States trying to track down San Rouge. We can't let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? We need to find some sort of clue before this southern sun melts it all away. Well, we made it, we made it. Patty, is something wrong? I got something to say. When I first met you in the hotel parking lot, you mentioned Saint Rouge, right? If you want to find it, Maybe you should track down Professor R. Professor R? Yeah. Professor R owns the jazz bar on the other side of the bayou. How do you know that? Uh, because. Because, huh? Interesting. Okay, Patty. I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? Ah, uh, I watch TV and look up stuff on the internet, I guess. Ain't much else to do when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Really? For some reason, I envisioned you working hard to take care of all the chores around the house. Well, of course I do stuff like that, too. But doesn't everyone? Why bother talking about it? Other kids your age don't help out their parents. They're too busy talking with their friends on the phone or through emails. That's stupid. I don't get why everyone's so obsessed with taking pictures of themselves. Then they send them to their friends just to get approval? Talk about cringeworthy. How do you prefer to boost your self-esteem then? I don't need to. I have my family. And besides, my daddy's the town sheriff. All I need to be happy is a normal life. That's awfully mature of you. Everyone else is just childish. I'm totally normal. Okay, then. So, what do you do after you finish all your chores? You don't turn on CNN and pour yourself some bourbon, do you? CNN? That's kid stuff. What I watch is way more adult than that. Like what? Live sports? You just don't get it, Agent York. Full House, Friends, Beverly Hills 90210, sitcoms! Sitcoms are an all-in-one package. Dreams, love, life lessons, science fiction, They've got everything you'd ever want. And some cable channels just show reruns all day long. It's the best. Oh, but my favorite TV show is this old one called MacGyver. The main character is cute and smart. I don't know his real name, but I like him. Oh, and I also like Gil Grissom from CSI. I just think it's adorable how he keeps maggots inside his fridge. Thank you, Patty. That was very informative. Well, 
What do you think, Zack? Her tastes are... Hmm. They're a bit hard to describe. Wait, don't even say it. I know exactly what you're thinking. And I'm in full agreement. What? It's going, it's going. Guess we sit down then, shall we? Oh, let's save it. There's a phone there. There's a phone there. Let's save it first. There we go. There we go. Alright guys, that will do it for this part. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and comment and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and help me rise.